Because the majority of people who are faculty, even in biology where there are a lot of women, is men. And certainly men are in most of the leadership positions. So uh, it has been there all over the world, which is unfortunate. Uh, for a long time our society had uh, different kinds of values, maybe rightly or wrongly, we don't want to comment on that. But uh, because of that, uh, one particular gender has always found it difficult to get into laboratory science and into higher education and so on and so forth. That situation has changed substantially in the last about 20-25 years. But we still see effects of that because there is a pyramid in which we have a sufficiently gender balance thing at the bottom of the pyramid. So if you go to universities and colleges, now you find actually there is proper gender balance. But as you move up the pyramid, when you start rising up, taking faculty positions and higher faculty position, assume some administrative responsibilities, there the gender issue really breaks down. In academia, definitely, at faculty level, there are more men than women in uh, institutes, top tier research institutes, etc. Okay. Um, I'm just speaking about India and the life sciences. So if you look at the, the amount of women faculty in biology, it's about 26%. And that is considered on the higher end. When you go to fields such as, you know, physics, math, it becomes even lower, sometimes dropping as low as 16%. You know, in terms of the, I know at the level of the PSC students, uh, there's the, at least in numbers, there are more or less equal number of uh, men and women. But uh, at higher levels, they're definitely not uh, equal number. There are more men than uh, women. If you look at uh, the level of PhDs, you have probably equal numbers. Sometimes, in fact, at the master's level, I've always seen more girls than boys who are interested in life sciences and who take it up as a career choice. But by the time it moves on, there is a dwindling number of scientists. And if you think 26% for women faculty members is low, as you kind of move up, you know, in terms of seniority and levels of leadership, this number drops even further. So uh, I believe if you look at, you know, vice chancellors, at the level of vice chancellors, it's almost about 5 to 6%. So that's a, that's a statistics which would shop, stop us in our, you know, tracks immediately and tells us that there is something that is, you know, amiss here. And in one of the interview panels, uh, students were asked to name three women biologists from India. Okay, and most people didn't know three women biologists from India. Okay, and and this is uh, a, as shocking as it might be. It's real. At one point, an exercise was done where they asked kids to draw scientists. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that popped into their mind was a male scientist in the lab coat, right? And now that is slowly changing. So you can see the bias has set in right then. For many, many drugs, tests would be done only on men, not on women. Is that when we evaluate performance, we evaluate merit, we measure everyone using a same scale, using a single scale, right? which is probably not correct and because we just measure everyone with a single scale and that scale was devised historically by male you know scientists or you know whosoever in each field so that scale is not correct to measure everyone so that's why even in the evaluation process the disparity comes i see that women are generally very accommodative and very patient and this is taken as a weakness so um, a lot of times um, they are not taken seriously because they do not voice out their concerns and secondly they are very very patient extremely patient which is why they have been uh, I mean uh, their voice has been not heard 
um it could also be that the stage at which you know people are getting brought in to be faculty members is a period of time where in personal lives and family lives there are a lot of changes that are happening and the brunt of these changes uh often falls upon the women whether it is in terms of caregiving in terms of growing families or it could even be a problem that's very well known in academia which is the two body problem which is if you have two partners or two spouses uh, who are both scientists and, and they're applying to the same place often times institutions will not kind of hire both of them both the both the both the partners in which case it's quite often the fact that the the woman scientist kind of drops out of the race at that point so you know at many levels you can see the pressures that are building upon women scientists which lead to fewer you know fewer uh, representation and the biggest reason why you want to make it inclusive is also because you want the best ideas to come into the field you want good people to come in and there is no there's it's nothing given that only one class of people is going to have the best ideas it can come from anyone so that re- representation is very important and not only gender imbalance i would say diversity as such is really important for excellence right our ability to troubleshoot think rationally about problems getting novel ideas is much better when we are diverse when our group is diverse and see the one example is your us uh, science right so they are they most of their science is done by people from all around the world who go there and pursue postdocs right so this uh, diversity that they have is uh, one reason for their excellence and i think indian science also needs to define ways design ways in which we can uh, incorporate that diversity in our ecosystem as well as uh, see as a woman myself as a mother i simplify science and teach it to my child so i am performing science communication there on a day to day basis at home and like they say when women are educated an entire family is educated Uh, so this has been kind of well established well discussed for a long time it's not a recent trend that we're seeing of fewer women you know in science i think if anything it's only improving the you know the proportions um but before you can get into addressing what to do about it i think it's also meaningful to look at why why are we seeing this and so there can be a few different kind of it's an entanglement of a few different things that is happening uh, maybe the messaging that's going out to young women to young you know girl students is that a career in science is not a feasible career it's not a stable career it's not a career meant for them you know often times when you know students when you discuss with them you know like you hear that you know girl students get a feeling that you know stem is maybe something that's not for them i have observed uh, many women phd students Uh, put up with mental harassment from male and female supervisors uh, they endure a lot of negativity there and what i don't get here is why female phd students who uh, wouldn't put up with any form of patriarchy or harassment from any of their male uh, friends or family members or any male member of the society uh, will uh, generally they bow down to uh, this harassment or toxicity from male supervisors i i i will strongly say that women need to stand up for themselves they need to voice their concerns be it a male or a female supervisors you do not need to bow down uh, to any uh, form of toxicity at work uh, just in order to obtain a degree uh, so awareness is the first step right if um you know in textbooks that uh, you know students read now uh, what is the representation like right um, and uh, the more the moment you start noticing that there are more uh, women scientists that you hear about uh, you know that also changes your opinion about how you view uh, women in science so i remember for some reason we were looking like i was just googling you know like top 10 indian women researchers and it was almost like every single list had the same people starting from kamala soni so you know i 
think there is such a lack of you know I like you know such a lack of awareness even among the community of you know like because that's the f our first instinct is to male name male scientists so I absolutely agree so I think that kind of awareness you know just showcasing who we have because we do have fantastic uh, scientists in India and covering fields so it's you know whether it is in physics in math but even in the in the life sciences from you know neuroscience to doing field work in ecology uh, you know to plant biology vaccines you know we have great science women scientists across the board and we should kind of you know we should highlight them we should showcase them right. and um, there are opportunities now in terms of funding uh, that um, are directed towards women uh, you know the amount of uh, if you need to take a break at some point of time that um, period of the break is accommodated for uh, you know in that uh, you know funding uh, scheme in such a way that it is not going to hamper your progress uh, a lot of funding agencies have this now right um what are my views i think we have to set it right at the time of hiring we have to make sure when positions open, we hire and continuously keep an eye on the gender ratio um, in, the, in the department or in the institute at the time of hiring. And that's where we can fix it. And uh, there have been systematic attempts made, including when I was the Director General of CSI myself, in uh, correcting this particular ratio. To some extent, uh, we have made uh, some progress, but considerable progress still needs to be made. I think it's important to remember that this is not a women in science issue. It is an issue for the scientific community, which basically goes to say that this is not an issue that women scientists should sort out amongst themselves. And I'm just saying this because I have attended quite a few panel discussions, you know, on women in science, where the panelists are all women, the audience is all women, and that kind of sends a very strong message that this is, you know, your problem, you have to sort it out as women in science. Instead, I think it's really a, a, a community level problem. So, you know, everyone should kind of be a part of this discussion, facilitate this, because this is a life science research ecosystem problem. It's actually a research ecosystem problem at large, but in the confines of talking about biology, I think it's all of our problem to look at it. The boys have a certain way of doing things and girls have a certain way of doing things. Okay, um, Especially in India, of course, it's very, very ingrained uh, because women are taught to behave in a certain way, women are taught to do certain things in a certain way, boys are given many more freedoms and many more things. So they behave in a certain different way. Um, they have completely different traits. So when I think of a group, I always think of how can I combine them in the best possible way so that we have a productive group. However, one positive thing um, that is there in India, which I will definitely mention, and something that was put in at the time of independence, um, while the constitution was being drafted, there were inputs taken from everyone and um, Edwina Mountbatten, who was the wife of the last uh, Viceroy of India and, and uh, Sarojini Naidu actually had drafted a policy saying that any woman who works in the government sector at a certain level will have the same pay scale. So suppose we have in, uh, recruitment at the level of scientist C. Now I'm going to go all administrative on you. I'm warning you. Suppose there's a recruitment at the level of scientist C. Any woman who joins in or a man who joins in will be placed at the same level with the same basic structure of, of uh, whatever is the pay scale and things like that. This is an advantage in India, I must say, because there was a study that was done in the US, which we think is such a progressive nation. Uh, this uh, study has been published in PNAS, no less, it's, which is a very well-known journal. And they had uh, actually sent out a blank questionnaire to researchers and uh, they found that very often women researchers were actually recruited at lower pay scales than were the men. What does it say for the system? 
and I'm actually I was actually happy when I saw this and this is a reality in India so I think more women need to make, to think that okay we are being treated as equals at least at an administrative level the mindset mind you it has to change as yet I will not say that the mindset has changed but at least we are on a good starting point <laughs> so uh, I know that there are internationally sponsored lecture series in India and when the for granting agency says you need to have a speaker participant ratio to be 50 50 we managed to do it right yeah. I mean that's basically the criteria for being given the grant this is an expectation after you're given the grant so one can do it even at larger scale uh, what appears in forms right and uh, as uh, or what how emails are written uh, saying uh, you know emails going to faculties which begin with dear sir right the, uh, all these little things have to be fixed yeah. right and uh, i think once we start doing this at all these levels the hope is that um, women will not just aspire uh, or want to be in uh, you know, pursuing uh, science as a student, but then also want to stay and continue working in science, uh, you know, and for a, for a career. So I think it's it's imminently doable. There is a lot of awareness in terms of the challenges that exist. And I think slowly, steadily, we are making the changes that hopefully uh, will allow for more women to be part of, uh, you know, institutions and 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 come to leadership positions too. Yeah. Right. Which is kind of important, I think. Without that, this change, uh, or that may be an important catalyst uh, to this. Uh, hopefully, it will. You know, with uh, if we all make a concerted effort, I think that will also we can you know, make sure that uh, the gender ratio is much more equal at all levels of uh, science. Difficult to do, but can be done. Definitely can be done.